Hello. So I wanted to do some straight talk necessarily, and that was about learning things the way I learn things the hard way, the very, very, very hard way. Um, basically, everything that I know up to date has had to be uh, via the hard way, and. <sighs> I know a lot of things. I know more things than most people know at my age. And that's because I have made so many mistakes. For example, just today, I was wearing bright, happy colors. Now, normally, let me lay out the context for you. I've got bleach blonde hair and my wardrobe is typically just solid black, right? So, I wear, effectively, goth clothes. Now, why would I, as someone who wears pure black, suddenly say, hey, let me switch up my wardrobe? Well, my goal, necessarily, is to represent every single fandom that I could in one single style, one single look. And I had the Gorillas from the Gorillas Band, on my on my shirt that was a white graphic tee with the the four members of the gorillas band in the center and they were surrounded by pink and it was flamboyant and glamorous and it was uh, a little too bright and happy and i was wearing a shy guy earring to represent mario uh, I had a Hatsune Miku phone case for my phone and i had a five nights at freddy's wallet I was representing at that mo uh, at that moment anyways four fandoms at the same damn time. Now, this sounds great and everything. This sounds fantastic in theory. However, I had a lot of bright and happy colors going on from a lot of bright and happy fandoms like Mario and <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's, which has a bright and happy surface disguise, anyways, for a horror game. So, I was so utterly bright and colorful that somebody pulled out of their car and said, Trump rocks, and then proceeded to drive forward. Now, this means that I was so utterly bright and colorful that people mistook me for being a homosexual. And at that point, I took a personal note to decide, okay... Never do bright and happy colors ever again, because that would shatter my fragile, 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 fragile masculinity. Which is very important to me, as it should be. Ha ha ha. Just kidding. But regardless, I've had to learn how to eat properly with my cereal. Right? So, beforehand, I would, like, dig into it. Okay, I would have to lift my elbow upwards and I would just have to scoop it in this really awkward angle using my whole fucking arm. Whereas most people would just use their two fingers. I would just use my whole freaking arm. And there was no wrist motion or anything. I was just using like my whole arm. And I had to learn the very hard way just how to eat my cereal correctly because nobody ever instilled that upon me. It wasn't a distinctual process and somebody had to say, okay, Eli, here's how you eat cereal. Like a real human being. And I didn't know. I didn't know that. Because I was a fool. I was a dingus. I was a moron. And just just these basic human things that everybody knows i've had to learn the very very hard way and there's something that's rather interesting about that actually that's opened my eyes because i've just had to move away from uh, parents i'm in college for the first time I'm living in campus and it's very interesting because um, uh, it's, it's, it's opened my eyes in a way because I have understood now that a lot of my life to do the right thing has been rather to avoid doing the wrong thing, if that makes sense. So rather than actively pursuing a course of action, I am sitting idly by the sidelines and avoiding any unpleasantries shall we say 
instead of taking action, I'm avoiding action because I'm too scared of doing something wrong because everything I've learned, I have learned the very hard way. So what I really want to do, however, is I want to take steps forward and I want to do the right thing much more often than I currently am. And I want to pave my own path to something greater because I am something more, I've decided, than somebody who avoids making mistakes. I am far more than somebody who avoids making errors. I want to be the person who leaps out and chooses to do the right thing, but at the risk of doing something wrong. It's sort of what it means to break out of that shell, that that fear that holds you back, the fear of making errors, the fear of doing something wrong, the fear of being seen as different in the eye of the beholder, when in reality, you have to, um, you have to take those chances because it's through taking risks that we end up doing something amazing for our society. And that might not be like my example, such as eating cereal and dressing in bright and happy colors, right? But I'm talking like choosing to help someone in need instead of just ignoring them, like a homeless person, for example. Psychological tests have been done in, uh, in uh, today's society, effectively. If you put a homeless person with crutches, he collapses. Nobody stops and helps because everybody thinks you, homeless person, because they're lesser in our society. It's much similar to racism and all that jazz and all the other isms, classism, so on and so forth. The, the bottom line is that people don't want to touch that because it's, ew, gross. And so they just let him suffer. And eventually somebody comes along and helps, but most of the time people will just let him suffer. And that's the sad truth of our society. So if you want to be the person who's different from that society, the person who defines society, then, you know... That, that's when you have to take steps forward. That's when you have to break out of the alleged norm and actually offer that man a hand. Or uh, that was just one example. But there are endless other examples of how the norm and following that isn't always necessarily a good thing. There are many cases, however, when following the norm can be a good thing. So... It takes not just blind courage necessarily to jump in without planning, but a careful precision. And, and you have to know when to hold your tongue and when to be courageous, when to follow the norm and when to not. It takes a certain amount of wisdom to do the right thing. And while it is entirely honorable, especially in my case, to want to do the right thing instead of living in fear of doing something wrong, you can't always be outgoing. You can't always be gung-ho about absolutely everything because that seems a little, well, <sighs> rehearsed, uh, overbearing, and it could, in fact, put you in a situation where you have made more mistakes than good. So, if you do end up trying to pursue, do so with caution, do so with an open mind and with a careful eye, be very analytical. You don't want to end up hurting someone by mistake and doing something horribly wrong when in fact you had only intended to do something right. Just as a little non-serious example, I was in theater at one point and there was, uh, oh, we were doing the Little Shop of Horrors as uh, the play. And um, in the musical, there was the voice of the plant. This, he put me to shame. He was amazing. He was absolutely phenomenal. And everybody loved him for it. Uh and I tried because we were on like we were nearing our last performance together. So I was trying to be heartfelt. And so I I uh, went over to this guy and I said, you know what? You got an amazing voice. You're doing well. You're keeping things together. And I went on and on and on and on and on. And he just stared at me and he was like, OK, you need to work on your compliments. And I was confused. And I said, OK, 
why is that? And he says, because it sounded a little rehearsed. It sounded fake. And I uh, ended up making it kind of weird. One, because I should mention another a uh, clue in context then here is that I have Asperger's syndrome, so I'm rather uh, uh, it's it's rather easy for me to make social errors and to not know when to stop or when to keep going or all that jazz with social interaction. So uh, with that being said, um, understanding how to socialize with this person and how to give a compliment for me, it ended up going very wrong when I wanted to do something very right, which was give him the compliment and let him know that he was appreciated and that all his hard work actually meant something and was a huge part of the play. But I ended up fucking that up. Make sure you, if you do something, you do it right. Not as to discourage the courageous heart, of course, but again, proceed with caution. You know, if you do it, you gotta do it right. You know, you can't be like guns a-blazing. Like, oh, bloody hell. Uh, Splatoon 2 is another fine example. Say you're playing Splatoon 2, and you gotta choose between spoons and forks. And you say, god damn it, I love spoons. And you are a spoon ad advocate to the very end. And you're doing, you're thinking you're doing a very good thing by by being that spoon advocate. You are advocating for your whole team by your own goddamn self because spoons are the greatest and fuck forks. Now the problem is that you've gone from advocating to your team to being very overbearing and overwhelming with what you believe in. So it's okay to believe in something or a certain culture of sorts, but you can't be overbearing with it because then that drives people away. And then people will think, oh, it's the obnoxious spoon guy. <laughs> you know, he just, he, he just wants to caress your rusty spoons. But, you know, that's, yeah, that's, that's kind of weird. The hell was I going with this? <laughs> yeah, don't be overbearing. Don't be too courageous. Instead, be the guy who goes like, if you want to advocate for your team, if you really want to do that, then be the guy who goes like, you know what? I, I just like spoons. I just like to eat my cereal with spoons, eat my pudding with spoons, spaghetti. You can use a spoon for that. You know, just all things, even things that you shouldn't use spoons for, just use a spoon for it. <laughs> and that's just how it be. You know, that's how it do. That's just how it is. What you're doing for yourself and the whole team there is you're portraying them in a positive light. Instead of being that obnoxious guy who just wants to caress your rusty bones, you've turned into the guy who's like, you know what, he's a cool guy. He, like, I can respect him because he's just a regular person, but he just likes spoons. Similar, right? Yeah, Splatoon 2 is a fine example. And then you kick his ass, of course, because you're into forks and you're the opposing team. But that's in the Splatoon 2 setting. But whatever. <laughs> uh, that's that's different. That's it. Or whatever. I don't know. I have no idea how on earth I went from, like, my ideals and my beliefs to Splatoon 2 and forks and spoons. But yeah, back to my beliefs, what I really want to do is I want to be somebody who's more than just avoiding taking action. But my problem is that I've found that I'm rather stuck. I'm stuck in this spot and I can't get out of it. Because what I want to do is I want to take that action wisely in observing my surroundings. But I want to, uh, I want to just do it. I, I don't know how. I don't know what steps to take. Just fulfill your objectives that you establish with a written schedule effectively. I just... It sounds really easy in paper. Like, like I, have it, I have the ideas of what I'm supposed to do in my head. And I know what I'm supposed to do. But it's hard to do that. It's hard to put it into practice. Like, every time I tell people about my problems and how eager I am to overcome them, they always say I'm quite motivated, and I am. I am entirely motivated. I just have no idea what I'm supposed to do. 
It's not that I lack motivation, it's that I lack ethic, it's that I lack the understanding of the direction I'm supposed to be walking towards, of my goals, of my processes. I, I mean, I have the objective, I just don't have the process of walking there. I don't have the process of fulfilling that objective. All I have is just do it. Here's a schedule, do it, do it, and do it now. I mean, I guess I could get involved with the um, St. Cloud State University radio because part of the action that I want to take is like I'm going into mass comm. As my major in college, I want to graduate with a mass comm degree and I'm going to go into radio where I'm going to broadcast and shit and it's going to be great. It's going to be amazing. I think I, I, I've been told I got a nice voice and that a lot of people could see that and I was like, you know, well, what can I do with this information? I mean, I, this could be my fucking future. I don't know. So I guess the right thing is keep your eyes on the prize of fulfill your dream remember why you're here and just fulfill that objective of getting into the st cloud state university radio i mean sure i can try i i guess that would be pretty cool and that a lot of people could hear my voice but i mean i doubt that i got <laughs> i mean you know what I'm gonna I'm I'm not gonna put myself down. I I doubt that I could fail here. I doubt that I could I, I doubt that things could go wrong there. I've got a nice voice. Like earlier I um I was stopped by people and they were like I love your voice. I just want the Eli, say something. I was like, Hi, I'm Eli and they were like, Oh my god, that's amazing. So I could just I could continue to pursue in that case. Very well. Okay, I guess I just have to know when the whole Hi, we are the radio people. Come join us. I have to know when that is. I, I gotta be there because I'm trying to be involved with that media. Okay, see, this is how we do it. This is how we establish ourselves a written goal. It's very much like that. You establish a goal, you, you think about when it's when it is, you figure it out, and you do it. Oh my god, I'm figuring things out just by talking to myself in front of a mic. This is amazing. Fantastic. Well, I'm probably going to go before I sound too much like a crazy person, so... I right. See ya.